I was holding the walls of the bathroom, like just trying to breathe through each contraction. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a hot minute. Having a newborn is seriously no joke. If you had had one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's rewind all the way back to the first day. The whole process began when we went to the hospital to start kind of a more natural induction method. And that was the something Foley. I can't remember what it's called. I'll link it somewhere here on the screen. Okay, so we made it. I have to put on my gown and then I should be good. I honestly, Is that like to pop my water or something? No, it's something? the, it's the uh, gel probably that goes in there. Okay. Nah, me. Yeah, it did drop. Definitely dropped. All right. All changed and ready to go. And now we, we have out. the monitor. We figured out what that thing is. Oh yeah, so that thing is what helps get that balloon thing into the cervix. I think that is the balloon. And basically, you grow it. they blow it up and they send you home with it, which I wasn't too excited about. And then once it falls out... If you're already dilated, they won't do it. Oh, yeah, true. If I'm ready three to four centimeters dilated, then they don't do it. But unlikely. <laughs> Yeah, I think. So sad. Oh, but then I again, look so like tired. No, no, but then again, there are situations where you know people don't have any contractions whatsoever, and then they're just randomly three or four centimeters. Yeah, without knowing. Those so are like unicorn women's. No, maybe, maybe <laughs> unicorn maybe females. Okay with all that stretching they did. I don't right. know. Anyway, so they send you home with it, and then um, once it falls out. Wait, wait. Hopefully labor Once. starts, but it, she said that probably it wouldn't. And then you come back tomorrow and you start pitocin and all that kind of stuff. What was the method if, if you're already blown out like three, four centimeters? What was the? You go home and you come back tomorrow for pitocin. Also, they did nothing then. They don't put jelly inside some kind of gel. Okay. So I guess that is. It. It's gonna be something. It would have been easier if she would have just, uh, you know started coming out on her own so i guess the good part about having a plan and being induced is that now i can go home do my hair properly pack and come back for the real deal yeah that's true it's not a surprise yeah, you plan anymore easier and what is it going to be it's going to be the 9th but she might come out on the 10th or 11th because depending on how long i'm going to labor for it in it wasn't that bad i mean it was pretty uncomfortable it felt like i'm getting my period like third day fourth day period cramps it just feels kind of uncomfortable kind of cold on the inside and now they're just monitoring me for 30 minutes to see if everything's gonna be okay with me and baby but yeah it's not the best experience but it's not the worst experience so and it was it quick works. Hmm? and it was really quick it was pretty quick actually. like it was than a minute Really right away, quick. boom, done. Yeah, and it was nice. It was uh, one of the doctors that I've seen before. Because I'm at my uh, at my hospital, they rotate sometimes. They have what do they say? They, we sign that it's they rotate. A lot of doctors rotate. Yeah, they and, shift uh, change. Shift change, and then also they have, like teaching doctors, and all kinds of doctors. Anyway, so I got the same lady that did my first sweep. So she's nice. I like her. So we're out, Oleg went to go get the car and uh, it's really uncomfortable walking because like the rubber piece is like inside being rubbed, you know, with your private parts. So other than that, I feel like maybe I'm coming on with some contractions maybe because I do feel like period pains here and there. I don't know, but they said that's normal, so that's good. Okay guys, so I'm still pregnant, <laughs> obviously, and I have a couple of updates for you guys. So the last thing you saw me do was wait for my husband to bring 
the car over so I can get in and we can go home. We're to head our way back home and I started to feel a lot of discomfort and pain in the form of like period cramping but it started out as just like always being there and always kind of just like always just being there basically but then throughout the car ride it started to get spikes of kind of more stronger pains which I think well which I know were kind of like contractions so lo and behold once we got home it was borderline like really painful it got to the point where I couldn't continue focusing and I needed to breathe through them um, I took a quick shower and Oleg went downstairs to cook some bread um, he wanted to make some buns and while he was doing that I went to lie down and there was a point where I felt the strongest contraction I mean I can't say ever because obviously I'm gonna feel stronger ones but it was so unbearable that I was like shaking I couldn't breathe at all. I, I tried to breathe through it as best I can. I felt nauseous. I felt hot. I felt like I needed to poo. I felt like I needed to throw up. And then it slowly started dying down. But then I went to the bathroom because I literally thought I was going to poo myself. And as I sat on to the toilet, the Foley came out. So that's that. So I guess I hit three centimeters and the Foley came out. And then as soon as it came out, I just felt like a sigh of relief. My body stopped contracting, I guess, because like it thought it did its job. Obviously, it didn't because it needs to keep contracting. But that's what happened. So basically, that's it. My husband and I went for a walk. I had more contractions, but nothing that is progressing the situation by any means. So like I'm laying here now and I feel nothing, which really sucks. So I guess... It's a waiting game until tomorrow. I came home and I remember feeling so much pain like towards the night, I think by 9 or 10 p.m. or maybe even 11 p.m. I can't remember exactly the time. If you are feeling a ton of pain, showers help, especially in this kind of situation. So I decided to take a shower and I was literally shaking and holding against the walls. <laughs> I was holding the walls of the bathroom, like just trying to breathe through each contraction. And they started getting longer and longer, lasting a little bit longer. But I think they were honestly only like a minute long each. And they were five or six or even seven minutes apart. So it was not even bad. Well, I got out of the shower to use the toilet and the thing fell out. So that means I actually successfully dilated to two or three centimeters. I can't remember exactly what it is. That balloon is supposed to dilate you to that amount in hopes to get your labor progressing. Well, for me, it fell out and everything stopped. So my whole birth experience stopped right then and there. The doctors also told me to call in the morning and let them know how I'm feeling. And if things hadn't progressed, I would have to go in and continue the process and get induced with medication. And this is exactly what you guys saw. The birth vlog starts with us going there and getting the Pitocin and whatnot. And that's how it all started. So that's basically the majority of what you didn't see in the day before of the birth. So then that's when you see us driving in and going into the hospital to get the Pitocin done and to basically start the whole process. And you even see me say on camera in my birth vlog that we're not leaving here without a baby. And that's exactly what the nurse said because once you start this process, you have to go through with it because you're already dilated and they've already kind of messed with you inside. And it's basically go time. So we spent a long time in the waiting room where you saw Oleg do squats. We FaceTimed our family. We were updating everyone as much as we could. And I think we waited for about an hour. Like we got there, I think at three, four or five o'clock, we got into our room. We were greeted by a lovely nurse, our first nurse. She was super sweet and cracking jokes. And honestly, everyone at Mount Sinai is just incredible. The service you get there is just next level. And um, I think Everyone thought we were like some crazy camera crew YouTuber people. Well, I mean, we're not like crazy. We're not big or anything, but because of all the equipment we had to create that whole birth vlog, like people were super excited. And I was also really giddy and like you saw me smiling most of the time and I was like making, you know, funny jokes with the nurses and just kind of connecting because honestly, nurses have one of the most toughest jobs out there. Cared for me so well. The things they have to do, they have to, you know, deal with needles, deal with blood, deal with people in pain. They have to deal with, you know, feces and urine. I know that's TMI, but it's so true. Nurses, they just deal with such incredible and unique situations in the world that I just felt like being there, I wanted to not only make the experience good for myself, but good for them as well. So when it was time to push, like all the nurses that were on shift, they literally came in to like help and like watch and stuff. 
<laughs> it was like the most craziest thing. And then after I delivered, I was like, oh my God, there was like so many people. And my main doctor was like, yeah, we were like all waiting for you to give birth. We we're so excited for you. <laughs> Anyway, so back on track. So where was I? So the first nurse was amazing. The only little hiccup that happened that you guys didn't see and I didn't show, she couldn't get my IV into my left hand. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what the term is, but when they don't get it and then you get like a big balloon in your arm, I don't know what that's called, but that's what happened here. And unfortunately, she had to put it into this hand, which isn't good. And I didn't understand until I went to the bath dominant hand and you have to like wipe and stuff. So having cords on your hand, needing to wipe and do things with it was like super uncomfortable. But I think later on, they changed it. I can't remember. I gotta look back on the footage. Other than that, things were really great. As you saw, Oleg bought some donuts for everyone. So like on top of that, everyone was super excited. And, um, the food was pretty good at that point and I was still in the mood to eat. I even ate Krispy Kreme as you saw. And everything was going by super smooth until contractions started get, getting worse and worse and worse. And for me, like you can't really see how bad they get because there's music kind of glossing it over. But I'm gonna add some footage here of how bad it got. Like I was shaking from the pain. I could not stand it. And so by that point, the nurses switched out and I had my next nurse and that one, she was really helpful as well. And as the contractions started getting worse, she advised my husband to help me with pain management via acupressure because I really wanted to try giving birth without an epidural. I know, I'm psycho. I mean, a ton of women do it, but the pain is just incredible. Now, I'm not scaring you. It's literally just really strong, period pains slowly just like opening 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 but for me once i got the epidural to be honest i didn't even feel the epidural go in because the contractions were so painful in that moment so if anybody's wondering how the epidural went and how the contractions went um so smooth i would recommend the epidural to anyone if, if you want to try seeing how far you can get with the contractions go ahead but but do not wait for the contractions to get insane so like if you're already feeling contractions six out of ten you better start telling them because by the time the anesthesiologist comes to your room you're going to be at a seven maybe eight maybe nine because sometimes it progresses faster and he's or she is not always available to give you that needle so that's my only tip if you know you're eventually going to get the epidural or you're in the beginning process and you're like oh, i don't know but then it gets starting getting worse and worse and you already know that maybe you might get one i highly recommend you start planning when they're going to come because sometimes like one of my girlfriends, she called, she called it an anesthesiologist and he couldn't come for like an hour and a half and it was terrible. She was in so much pain and actually by the time that he got there, she was so dilated. They said, you can't even get it. You have to push. Like imagine pushing a baby out without an epidural. <laughs> like, is that a joke? I'm sorry for me. I don't know. Maybe next baby will be faster, but because it was progressing for me so slow, I could not stand another another minute of that pain. Like it was terrible. I've heard that women that progress fast, you don't even notice like, centimeter one, two, three, four, five. Like you get to the hospital, you're at five and then boom, you're at 10 and you push it out. Like you don't even notice it. I don't know how that happens, but for me, it was really slow. Like I got induced and it just wasn't working. They upped my Pitocin, then it got super fast. And that was just my experience. So another thing that you did not see us film is I think somewhere around six or seven centimeters when I was almost ready to push, the nurse laid me in a certain way that made the baby's heart rate drop and they almost lost her heart rate. I asked her a question and she was like, let me just focus, I need to focus. And she was like, she looked frantic a little bit to be honest, so kind of, she scared the living life out of me. I, I don't know, I was just so scared. She called in the doctor, like my doctor came in and started checking things out. And then after a couple of minutes of tossing me back onto the other side, and doing, a, I don't even remember how they did it, but they kept monitoring the baby's heart and thankfully her heart came back. After that, my nurse kept coming in and checking on my levels and you know, just monitoring me, which was nice. And then at some point um, she dimmed the lights and she said that we can wait a little bit, we can rest a little bit until it's time to push. So she dimmed the lights and we, I personally got a chance to relax a little bit until the epidural started wearing off on my right side here, like kind of lower than my ovary. It started wearing off. I think it's because the position I was in, I was laying on my left and I feel like the drug was seeping down to my left. So they were afraid to put me back on my back because they were afraid that they would lose the baby's heart weight again. And they, their theory was that the baby doesn't like the right side. So if you've ever gotten an epidural, you know that they gave you a little button that you can give yourself a little dose and the dose is 30 milliliters per hour and I've already clicked that button once so I couldn't click it again and the pain was becoming a 7 out of 10 like was starting to climb up there and what the nurse does to see if it's actually wearing off is that she takes a bag of ice 
and she compares it to your body parts because here you're not numb, right? You're numb just waist down. So she'll take a bag of ice and she'll touch your leg, touch your stomach. What's, and then she'll ask what's colder, your foot, your foot or your stomach? And you say your stomach. But then she touches your stomach, your leg, and your, and your breast. And she says, what's colder? And you say, whatever it is. And that's how they determine how much the epidural has dropped. And at that point, she did that test and, and she realized that, yeah, I do need a little bit of help. So we called the anesthesiologist. He came back and he opened some kind of thing and put another dose in there for me. And it helped and it brought the pain down to like a four out of 10. The left side was pretty numb. I couldn't feel anything. But that spot, to be honest, I felt it. And I'm actually kind of happy I did because later on when I was pushing, I knew when to push for a contraction. Like I could feel it. I could feel the need to push, which is pretty cool. And it wasn't too painful. It was painful, but not like crazy pain. Okay, so after he gave me that shot, I proceeded to try and relax a bit more. I closed my eyes and then before I knew it, um, I don't remember if it was my nurse or my doctor, but they came in and they said, I think it was my nurse. She came in and she, she said, okay, you're ready to push. I think she checked me. Yeah, she came in to do a check and she said that I'm ready to push, I'm at 10 centimeters. And at that point, I think it was either 12 or one because the baby was born at two by the time they prepped the room and everything. Anyway, I don't know the exact details, but they came in, they said I was ready to push. My doctor came in, awesome doctor. I'm so happy I had her. And then I got the epidural shakes or jitters, whatever you call them. It's not because you're cold. I honestly think it's because I got nervous because I didn't have them up until they opened all the lights. Everyone started coming in. And I think I got nervous. I got so nervous that I got, I feel like I got stage fright because my mouth went super dry as well. Whereas before that, like I was resting, I didn't have shakes or dry mouth. So I feel like it was triggered by nervousness because they're shooting your nervous system down. And if you get nervous and your nervous system is like under control under a drug, I feel like that's what happened to me. It kind of like affected my nervous system that way. And I started jittering, but a lot of people get it. And who knows if it's for the same reason. Anyway, that's besides the point. I started getting the jitters and they set my legs up and then you see me push 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 i'll put some footage here and the doctor was incredible she tells me to stop so i don't tear and then i think it was like nine or ten minutes of pushing oh in the beginning i could not feel how to push so if you have any chance to look at a mirror or look at a camera or look at yourself it's gonna because you don't feel anything when you see it it's gonna make you remember how to push because you're gonna see your private parts and you're gonna remember to push. I don't know why that happened to me. That happened to me. And hopefully if you try, maybe it helps you. But because my husband flipped the camera over and was showing me what was going on, I was able to push really hard. And because I was feeling the push sensation, like needing to push in my um, lower right side, in the beginning was pretty slow start because I didn't really, I couldn't get a handle of it. And then after that, the doctor was super impressed and she was super happy and she was born in like nine to 10 minutes. I can't believe it. Thanks to all the working out I did. <laughs> And then once she came out, it was like the most amazing moment ever. I always thought I would cry, but for some reason I didn't. I was just so happy. Like I just wanted her my whole life. I've wanted to be a mom my whole life and waiting for the perfect moment for it to happen. It finally happened. I mean, it's never a perfect moment, but I just wanted to have everything ready, have a place for her. And it was just so awesome meeting her for the first time. And it's so funny how they're just like the way they come out is the way they are. Like her cry is still the same cry, she just yells. <laughs> Her face shape is like developed in the same same way and it's kind of still the same head shape just bigger So once I pushed the baby out then it was time to push my placenta and this is where things got a little bit weird <laughs> and unexpected My placenta was like some weird placenta with some extra layer like a hat they mentioned on it You should have seen the staff. They started taking pictures of it and they Apparently they sent it off for testing. It was so weird and I think that explains why nobody felt or saw her kicking in me because not only because my placenta was in the front, but also because it was like extra thick. And this girl, she was born so strong. Like I remember first holding her hand and she would like, she would move my hand as a newborn. It was crazy. But after pushing the placenta out, um, it was hard for the doctor to get it out. She was so focused and I was like, what's going on? Like I thought something was wrong with me, but she just was trying to get every little bit out of me. It was such a strong placenta with like the layer that was on it. I'm not gonna share the screen because it's so bloody and disgusting here, but maybe I'll show a share like a, like a cartoon picture of it so you guys can see normal versus mine. Anyway, she was pulling and pulling and trying to clean out there with her hand. And then because of that, because she was in there for so long, she was afraid I would get infection. So I was hooked on to an IV right away with antibiotics to prevent me from getting any kind of infection if it got in there, because she was in there a lot trying to clean it all up because the way she took it out, I guess pieces were left. So the nurse let me have her on my chest as you guys saw in the video. And then they took her away for weigh weighing 
and uh, putting on her diaper. So I totally forgot to mention that earlier in the day, like way before I got induced, my nurse was asking me of certain things that I'd like for my birth. And honestly, like for me, I was pretty flexible because at the end of the day, for me, it was most important for her to get here safely. Like I wasn't set on anything. And that's what I've heard a lot of women say, don't be like set on a birth plan because hello, how can you control such a thing? The only thing you control probably is getting induced. After that, like my friend got induced and it ended up in a C-section. So let go of like any birth plan you have. Honestly, I think that you should be very fluid with this kind of thing. But one of the things that my nurse asked me in that moment is if I want the cord blood to pass through to the baby, like for, I don't remember how much time it was. I don't remember what exactly what it was, but basically they were asking me if we wanted to cut the cord right away or if we wanted the baby to lay on me for a bit and then they want and then to keep the cord running a little bit longer for the blood to pass either way. And I said, sure. I don't remember what the benefits of that are. Do your research. I said, sure. And also they asked if we wanted to put this like stuff on the eye. I don't remember what it was. And they said, there's no proof that it actually helps. So we decided not do that. And so far it hasn't affected her in any way. But anyway, we did that thing with the cord. It was cut after the, after she laid on my chest. I think they took her away to, the, to that little baby area where they did her weigh in the measurements and they gave her to my husband where he first held his baby girl, which I'll roll the clip right now. A salad wrap. <laughs> Shh. Shh. My little burrito. <laughs> That's crazy. Are you gonna, are you gonna hold her? So you have to hold her this way? Oh my god, heart attack. Oh my gosh. You go like this, shh, or something like that. Sorry. She knows your voice, so you can say hi to her. See? She responds. <laughs> Time for bed. Yeah, right. Party just started. She's like trying to suck on something. I'm so cute. It's cute. She's probably still hungry. So after Oleg got to hold his baby girl, the nurse, you know, the nurses do, like I mentioned, so much work. I'm just I was like in awe of them. She was left with all the bloody like things in the room to clean. She had to get me to the bathroom. She basically sat me down to the side and slowly got me up to see if I can walk again. It's like once they unhook the drugs, you start to gain back feeling in your legs um, and you start to gain back feeling in your bottom half. And at that point, the nurse is supposed to help you go to the bathroom. Okay, I totally missed that somewhere in there, I got to latch the baby for the first time. And oh my God, she was such a good latcher, such a good eater. My daughter, obviously, because I love food. <laughs> well, her, her dad loves food as well. So I'm so grateful for that because I've heard so many women struggle with like latching and feeding and tongue tie and da da da. There's so many issues. And if that was like, if that was something that would happen to me, like I would probably feel defeated. So if you feel defeated and your baby's not eating or not latching, go see help. Just your baby's supposed to naturally be able to eat. And if something is stopping the baby from latching properly or whatnot, and you feel like the baby's not gaining weight, whatever it is, just go see a doctor. And if breastfeeding is not your way and it didn't work out for you, don't worry. There are so many amazing formulas on the market. To be honest, I, I cheated a little bit. My baby was so hungry because I don't know, I guess she was used to eating a lot of food that in the hospital, she was screaming for food and I didn't really have enough to make her full. So I asked for a little bottle of formula. And since then we've always been on formula. On the, at the hospital, she was using Similac, but then we, I discovered that she had so much constipation and problems with her stomach from it. I did a ton of research and I found this uh, hip formula. It's from Germany. Ladies, do your research. If your baby doesn't have any milk allergies or whatnot, just do your research and see if it fits you. There's probiotics in there. There is so much, so much good stuff. My baby goes to the bathroom regularly. She stops screaming from pain and I'm just super happy with it. Talk to your pediatrician or doctor as well. Maybe they can help you sort through it even though they might not know it. Read online as much as you can because this little being needs to eat. For us, we continued with breast milk and formula. Nowadays, we just do formula throughout the day and breast milk throughout the night. On the topic of breastfeeding, make sure you get help and seek all the resources that your hospital has to offer 
in terms of lactation specialists, nurses, whoever is there, talk to everyone and anyone. My husband recommended to speak to more extra people than we actually had spoken to at the hospital. And I'm so glad I did because it gives you a different perspective. I actually ended up going to another appointment like three days after, and this was like a whole lactation clinic at my hospital. And they showed me something that nobody showed me before. Like there's a special lash technique where like you literally put their chin on the bottom of your boob and then you go like this with their neck. And it was like, like a life savior. Also, like when you're first at the hospital and they're, they're giving you so much information, you're gonna miss stuff. So definitely check out a lactation specialist after, like three days, four days after, a week after, whatever it is, whenever you can, whenever you get to your senses and have a moment, go see them because that day was another perspective and I was more aware of what's going on because obviously at home you have more help and the hospital you kind of, I felt a little bit more alone, whereas at home I had moms come over, grandmas come over and anyway, it was a little bit more calming. Like your adrenaline kind of settles down three days past due, past due date, past, past delivery. Get all the help that you can get with this because the more help you get, the easier your life will be. So when everything was done, baby was all good, was in my arms, we had our bags, all like packed all the equipment, the nurse packed all of our stuff. I was in wheelchair still because you can't walk far far yet, um, you just walk to the bathroom and back, you're slowly regaining your strength. The nurse wheeled me and Oleg took all our things to our postpartum care. And this is where it got a little bit interesting. I don't wanna bash the hospital, but they could use some improvements in their postpartum care. I don't know why, but we didn't get the best experience, but I don't, I've heard that a lot of hospitals have issues with their postpartum care. We get to our room, there's like a little section of like postpartum things for me there. There's a bed and like a couch that becomes a bed for Oleg. And at that point I stopped vlogging and we were so tired. I think by that point it was already 3 or 4 a.m. We just wanted water. We were so thirsty. We drank all of our Yeti water and the nurse wasn't super helpful in bringing it to us until like 6 a.m. when we were already like settled in and asleep. And it was just a little bit stressful that first night because the baby started crying a lot and that's when that's when she was super hungry and I asked for the formula and once I gave her that formula she finally fell asleep and I could get some and I could finally get some rest which was incredible so the very next day is like a super busy day uh, during your hospital stay there's a lot of people coming in, in and out of your room for me um, because my baby was I think it was because she was a different blood type than me I got some special shot into my system so that the future pregnancies won't be miscarried Apparently when the, your first baby is a different blood type than you, that's a, a chance that it can happen. I don't know, I think it's a new thing, but I decided to opt in for it because obviously I don't want miscarriages in the future. Um, there's just a lot of things happening. Unfortunately, I didn't vlog as much as, as I had liked to, but here are a couple of clips of the next day. Good morning, good Monday morning, everyone. I'm feeling better than I thought I would. And look, little baby. Little baby. Baby is here, doing well. Daddy is here, questionable on his <laughs> on his status of feeling, but we are so in love. Oh my God, I was like staring at her this morning, feeding her and she was just like looking at me, so cute. And now I just got breakfast, but I'm not really hungry. What else? Um, yeah. I don't really have much to say. I'm bleeding, obviously. My stomach went down so much. I'll show you guys a bump shot later on today when I have when I can put clothes on because I'm still hooked up to the IV. I don't know why I'm still hooked up, hooked up to the IV. Nice. Like so many there. people I've seen give birth, they're never on IV I'm after. Even Kate. Much, it's oh, it's the antibiotics. Oh, that's what it is. No, it's regular fluid. And, and antibiotics. Okay, so I know why I have it now. <laughs> Sorry needed a reminder even without sleep he still remembers everything so the reason i have um yes so the reason i have antibiotics and iv is because my placenta is i don't know what the name is but it has like a hat on it we'll, we'll should we put a screenshot probably not probably not screenshot but my placenta is unique it's like a weird shape it has like a weird layer to it and they send it off to the lab for uh, testing but anyway, because it was weird, she couldn't get some of the pieces so she had to put her whole glove inside and to prevent infection, she gave me antibiotics. So that's what I'm getting treated with right there. That mama rush I heard about. I feel like I quit YouTube right now. That's what I'm <laughs> My poor babies. I feel like I'm to work, like Oh my I God. Really so. You need sleep. She's so cute. No, like I've been in situations where I didn't sleep for 15 days and I 
I think it's because we're not home. I forgot to bring her hat. Oh my god, mom fell. And their hat is so grimy and disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna put on her hat now. So, it's a little bit later in the day. It is 11.30. And Oleg just brought us some breakfast lunch. And I almost forgot to show you guys so quickly. I'm having the warm chicken, grilled chicken salad. And that was a bureka treat. Now it's half of a bureka treat because I was starving. And husband got himself some pad thai. Because it's gluten free. Nice. Right? Yeah. How was your trip? Just tired. Tired? Yeah, we're tired. We didn't really sleep, but I have a, adrenaline, so I'm more energetic. And baby girl is just sleeping right over, where is she? There, in the box, in her little basket. Hubby got uh, some Thai Express, and my meal came as well, and it looks like it's better than breakfast and lunch, but still, I don't fancy it too much. It's like uh, some kind of a meat stew, but we'll see, I'll try it. And baby is content in her bassinet. She had her pediatrician come in and run all her tests. Everything looks like it looks good, thank God. What else happened? There's so much that happened. Basically, we have to be here until tomorrow morning. What else did she say when you were away? She said that we have to come back in three days to do a TSH thyroid test. They said back At 2 a.m. we can go home today. Is that a chef? Yeah, mm. but we have to come back and do her TSH. I forgot to update you on this. But TSH, last time they said it was after Better 48 hours. So we go home and we come back in three it's days, really Wednesday, 12th. She said, she just can't go anywhere. Well, she just, they discussed it and they said that better to do it uh, a little bit further. Yeah. For the TSH, for the Before thyroid, you. better to wait a little bit. Because for, you know why? Because right now the baby's still kind of using up resources that came from me. Once that kind of flushes out in the next 48 hours, then the results That's will be right. more closely related to her. Like That's closely to her. Yeah, we are so excited to go home. I don't know, we're just not hospital people. We don't like staying in hospitals. I don't know if people, other people enjoy this, but we don't, we don't enjoy it at all. No, especially well, like he's miserable. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go eat my food. That is it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I hope that it prepared you for your labor and delivery. I remember when I was pregnant, I was crazy researching these types of videos and seeing what others went through on top of watching their birth vlogs. So if you are expecting mama, please comment down below when you're due, if it's your first baby. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There's a ton of baby videos coming your way. There are baby essentials and hacks with newborns coming your way very soon. And most importantly, don't forget to always be yourself, be selfless, and never settle for less. Bye.